Hey, Mary in Greensboro, North Carolina. It's Matthew with FreePrescriptionLenses.com. And with the help of my GoPro camera, I'm going to show you how I cut prescription lenses for your brand new Michael Kors 8008. The color is 3013 and the 52i size. So let me take everything out of the original packaging that Michael Kors sends it to me in. Of course, this is your Michael Kors case. Your Michael Kors cleaning cloth that is in there and your Michael Kors frame that comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to prevent the temples from rubbing together during shipping from their warehouse in Italy. I'm going to take that off. Of course, you're going to get all the manufacturer's original packaging, one of which the lenses, the demo lens says Michael Kors, but I'm going to pop these out and I'm going to put your frame into the tracing element of my edger and I'm going to just very quickly 510 there we go I'm going to trace the shape of the everyone wants to know how the computer knows what shape lens to cut this is why the stylus pops up goes around and traces this shape of the right side first before moving over and tracing the left here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality you buy a genuine authentic Michael Kors frame and you will receive one pair of clear prescription single vision lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses if you just want to wear a really nice frame. My receipts have my federal ID tax number. So if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you will be reimbursed from this purchase whether you have vision insurance. I mean, yeah, whether you have a prescription or not, your insurance will pay for this. And and uh, what is it called? The health savings account, flex dollars. So your pupillary distance is 63. The computer starts at 32.5, half of 63 is 31.5. I'm going to put that there. Let's go ahead and get your lenses prepped. I'm going to set that down for now. Your right eye reads plus three and a quarter, minus a quarter, plus three and a quarter, minus a quarter at 80. I'm going to spin the axis wheel of my Marco 101 lensometer to 80. Take this out. Take the lens out of the protective sleeve. Put the lens in. Actually, I've got to put this on three and a quarter, the power drum. Rotate your lens until the sphere power comes in clearly. Find the optical center of the lens. Check your stigmatism correction, of which you barely have any, but you got a little bit. And I'm going to put three dots on your lenses. One, two, and three. And that is your right lens. Let's do the same thing now for the left, plus 275 minus a quarter plus 275 minus a quarter at 78. So I only have to turn the axis wheel two degrees from 80 to 78. Take your lens out of the protective sleeve. Put the power drum on 275 though. Now the lens comes in clear. Find the spherical component, the optical center, check your astigmatism correction. That looks good and I'll explain all that in just a little bit. Put those three dots on your lenses. One, two, three. And I'm gonna mark this one L for not right. Just like me, because I ain't right either. All right, so let's collect everything up here. Let's go on back down. Down here. Now I'm gonna put your right lens on the platform. Now this is a block. I like to call it Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. So I need to put a double-sided adhesive sticker on here. And I've got a couple of them over my head here. I'm gonna take two of those. Put that on there. Get that one ready. Let's do the same thing for your other eye. Get that one ready. Now the little silver button on the back is a magnet. That's what's going to hold it in place when I put it in the chuck. Let me pull this paper away to show you this is a 3M brand adhesive pad. Put that in there. Now your pupillary distance is already at 31.5. The reason why I put those red dots in there, your lens has to be oriented just right for this to fit in there perfectly. So for you to see at your best. So with those three dots, of which this one is your optical center, the center of the lens, this blue cross is the geometric center of the frame. If you measured vertically and horizontally, that blue cross would be right there in the middle, of which it is. Now your eye is just inset from there. So I'm going to put the, your optical center right there. Those two dots tell me on that orange graph tells me that they are lined up just perfectly and your lens is not off axis as it's known as. And I'm going to hit that button and the arm's going to come down and place the block onto your right lens. Let's do the same thing for your left lens. Pull the paper away to make this side sticky. Get you the 3M brand adhesive sticker. Get everything lined up just perfectly. Your optical center 
right there where it's supposed to go these two dots lined up opposite of that to tell me that's oriented in there just perfectly hit that button the arm comes down and places the block onto the lens now the actual cutting wheel is over here on the far right it's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away your lens material this wheel in the center is with, with that channel that valley that's what's going to put the bevel on your lens that v-shaped bevel so it'll stay inside the bevel of the frame and your lens will never come out so again the magnet's going to do its job a second time i'm going to put it right there and it holds it in place in the chuck or as i like to call it the charles because i don't know the machine well enough to call it chuck Let's pull up the shape of your lens onto the computer. That is it. I'm not going to polish the lens. I'm not going to put a bevel on the front surface, only on the rear surface. That green arrow is the start button in every language. When I do that, the door closes, that clamp shuts, and then your lens is going to be traced by two white styluses. It's going to trace, make sure the lens is large enough to fit into the frame, of which it is. And of course it's going around twice measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have no edge thickness whatsoever. Now in just a moment your wheel your lens is going to drop down onto the cutting wheel and begin cutting. Now your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They're also virtually unbreakable. They are bulletproof up to 22 caliber and have both UVA and UVB protection built into it. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin from overexposure where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes that never needs to be reapplied. I like the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours whenever you're outside. Now if you notice water has begun spraying on your lens, it does this for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle just to wash away any optical debris. Now your lenses are also aspheric. Aspheric simply means not spherical, not round. A spherical lens is completely round in every direction like a basketball. You've seen that in people's glasses where it looks terrible. It looks like they're wearing big thick coke bottle fishbowl lenses. This lens not only is at 40% thinner and lighter than plastic, but this front curvature is very flat to, to, to fit today's stylistic very flat fronted frames. So you're gonna have the best cosmetic look possible with these frames. Now when you buy glasses from people online they charge you for plastic lenses. If you want to upgrade to the thinner and lighter weight polycarbonate lenses, they charge you an upgrade fee for that. And then if you want the aspheric flatter curvature lenses, they charge you another upgrade fee for that. So this is someone else's top tier premium lens that you get for free from me just for buying the frame. And of course, this Michael Kors frame sells for $185 and of course it comes with one pair of free prescription lenses. So let's go ahead and take your right lens. I'm going to tuck it in the outside corner of the frame using my thumbs. Hang on, let me clean off some of this debris, some of this optical sawdust, if you will. And I'm going to tuck this in. And I think I still need to cut it down a little bit more. I do. So, oops, come on. Don't go anywhere, frame. Don't go anywhere. Put your lens back in. I'm going to take it down a tenth of a millimeter. Hit the retouch button. And I'm going to go, I'm going to take one tenth of a millimeter off around the circumference of your lens until it fits in there perfectly. A millimeter to all my American friends who have no clue what it is. A millimeter is the distance between my thumbnails. I'm going to take one tenth of that distance off going all the way around. I didn't want to force your lens into the frame. It would cause it to stretch or what we in the business call roll. If you imagine that your frame is like a gutter, if your lens were too large, it would force your, the bottom of this frame to roll outwards to shorten the life of the span as well as giving an ugly cosmetic appearance and because i cut every pair of lenses they get shipped worldwide no one's going to get anything any subpar work that comes out of this lab you want someone like me who's cutting your lenses every time so now the safety bevel is being applied
I always start a little bit large. Now the golden rule when you're cutting anything, a piece of wood or a lens, you can always cut more off, you can never add it back on. So I start a little bit large and work my way down. Now I'm gonna open the door with my mind, Mary. Watch this. Ooh, you like that? You like that? You don't even have to pay any extra for that. Okay. So here we are. Make sure that all the debris has been cleaned off. I'm gonna tuck your lens in at the outside corner using my thumbs, I press down. Now it snaps in there easily. I'm gonna do the same thing for your left lens. I'm gonna tuck it right in there to the chuck. Flip that over to L and hit the green arrow. Just like before the door closes, that clamp shuts. Then the two white styluses are gonna trace the shape as it goes around. It's gonna trace the shape of the left side of the frame this time to make sure it's large enough to fit. And of course, measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have no edge thickness whatsoever. So again, you're always gonna have the best cosmetic appearance of any frame that you get from me. Take this block off, it is no longer needed. Pull that sticker off. Now I'm gonna go down here to the lensometer. Let me grab my flashlight. I'm gonna put your lens in there just above this red dot here. Put it in there and I'm gonna spin the axis wheel back to 80. So I'm only gonna go to, oops, I'm only gonna go two degrees. Check the power and I'm getting plus three and a quarter. So we say that we're at three and then one step above three. I'm gonna check your astigmatism correction of which you only have one step and we're down to three. How did we go from three and a quarter to three? This is why the unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter, spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R starting at zero and going up in quarter increments, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, one, and so on. So you need 3.25 diopters of correction. So three times four is 12. You need 13 steps of correction for your nearsightedness. You are farsighted. With your glasses off, you see very well. But for up close, you need 13 steps of correction to magnify to the correct size. Now, you only need one step of astigmatism correction. Astigmatism is what makes sixes and eights look alike or the letters P and F. Astigmatism is not a disease. It is not an affliction. Everyone freaks out when they hear that word. This first number makes everything the correct size. This takes away fuzzy edges. So remember high school algebra? You subtract unlike signs. So we started three and a quarter. We subtracted 25 from it and we ended up at three. Oh, my battery dying. Come on, battery. Come on, battery. Now your left eye, you only need 11 steps of correction and then one step. So we're gonna end up minus a quarter from 275. We're gonna end up at minus 250 there. So we're gonna open, open up the chuck, take your lens out, clean off all the debris around the edge of your lens. Look at that, that's a good piece. That's like when it all comes out of the lint trap in your dryer in one piece. So I'm gonna take your frame, tuck the left lens in, and the outside edge, using my thumbs, I press down. That snaps in easily, not to force it into the frame. Take the sticker off. Now we're going to turn this, the fine tune knob to 78. We're going to put that there. Put the lens in over that red dot. And I am getting, come on flashlight, give me a little bit left. Plus 250. Check your astigmatism correction. I'm sorry, 275, 275, I need better glasses. See, we're one tick mark away from three. Check your astigmatism correction. We ended up at 250, halfway between two and three. So that is made correctly. Let's check your pupillary distance, which is 63. I'm gonna place the zero on my PD stick against my thumb on your right lens. When we look at it on your left lens, we're getting 63, so that is made perfectly. And here's the point in every video where I, when I clean your lens and I mention that when you get these in the mail, Mary, and of course free shipping anywhere in the United States, but when you get these in the mail, there's a small chance that these will fit too loose or too tight. However, there is an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm gonna get these in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. I have one ear that's higher than the other. So when I press down on mine, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. Flip them over, press down. There is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly. 
and they do and the the temples are not askew in any way check the tension on each hinge and that is perfect so mary in greensboro actually if anyone else has any questions you can email me at free prescription lenses at gmail.com now mary in greensboro hope you enjoyed watching as i cut prescription lenses for your michael kors 8008 it also goes by the name Foz. hopefully you can see that there this is the color 3013 3013 in the 52 eye size 5217 with a 135 temple this is the english tortoise it's a higher contrast tortoise between the classic to accentuate areas of your complexion that are light and dark and everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.